One of the reasons that I wanted to make this DVD was to share my story of what I went through when I was diagnosed with breast cancer and my whole breast cancer experience. It's been five years now, so as you can see, I'm perfectly fine. I've been given a clean bill of health. When I was first diagnosed, though, I didn't know that I would come to this point. It's like being given a death sentence, and even though 80% of breast cancer patients survive, you don't know where you're going to fit in the statistics when you first get diagnosed. The only people who I wanted to talk to were breast cancer patients or breast cancer survivors because I wanted to know what it was that I was about to go through, what were going to be my experiences, how sick was I going to be, what could I do to help myself, how was I going to make it from point A to point B, how many months and years would this, would this go on. The first thing that, you ha that happens to you is that you have your surgery and after surgery you're, you're home and you're by yourself. You've been given directions by a physiotherapist as to what exercises you should do but if you're anything like me, those first few weeks of being diagnosed and the surgery, I was a little brain dead, nothing registered, so I didn't really know how to do the exercises. Um, the other problem was that I thought that the doctor had made a mistake in my surgery. I thought that he had uh, cut the muscles too tightly and that there was something had gone wrong with my surgery because the muscle under my arm was pulled so tight that the skin was pulling over it and it looked like the guide wire of a tent. It was, was very unattractive. It was extremely painful and it really depressed me and I thought that I would never be able to raise my arm again and I didn't know who to turn to. I was at, at home, didn't, couldn't really phone up my surgeon and explain to him that I thought he'd done a bad job in surgery and I was afraid to do the exercises that the physiotherapist had suggested because I was afraid I was going to tear this muscle and cause even more problems to my health. So I, I was here, exercise specialist and incapable of exercising. A friend of mine who is a physiotherapist came over after a couple of weeks and she started me doing the exercises and ex sort of guided me through them. So her, her guidance helped me continue on. And as you can see, I've got full range of motion of my arm and that muscle did come back into shape and I don't have any problems with it. But at the time, I didn't know that. I didn't know what to do. And I've heard since that there are hundreds and thousands of women who have the same fear and they're afraid of exercising. They're afraid that they're going to rip that muscle and they don't exercise. So what I want to emphasize is that the most important thing you can do to rehabilitate your body is to exercise. You have to exercise that arm. You have to do those exercises. And I put the exercise program together trying to explain to you that you will be in pain, but not to be afraid of the pain and not to be afraid of ripping the muscle under your arm. It, you won't rip it. It will be rehabilitated, even if it takes you six months or a year. Most people, they're back in good shape within four to six weeks. So if you don't exercise, you will never regain or very likely never regain full range of motion. So whatever you do, don't be afraid of the pain, just exercise. The other thing that happened to me after the surgery and the seeing what happened under my arm was that I went into a terrible depression because I think the fear is part of the depression, the fear of cancer, the fear of the future, the unknown. It's always the unknown that's so frightening and that uh, I didn't, I couldn't pull myself out of that depression. My daughter pulled me out of the depression by throwing a great big party and having this huge surprise party with a hundred people and that snapped me out of it because before that I couldn't talk to anybody. But not everybody's fortunate enough to have a party thrown from them to get them out of depression. But it, it's, it, it's one of the side effects, a serious depression is one of the side effects of breast cancer. I was fortunate enough not to have chemotherapy, but I did have to have radiation. The radiation, when, you're, when you have radiation, you're, the radiation is burning the cells, and that means that you're being cooked from the inside. When I first started the radiation, I drove myself into the hospital and back, but I was warned that after two weeks it would start kicking in, the effects of this burning would start kicking in, and true to 
true to what everybody said, on the third week, when I drove in and when I drove back out, I felt as though I'd been hit on the head with a baseball bat. I was dizzy and nauseous and I was a total wreck. So after that, I had a friend drive me in and out. The other thing that I did was that I used cold compresses, towels that I brought from home, soaked in water, and then I alternated them. So as my friend was driving me home, I would put the cold compress on my breast and then the heat from the radiation would be absorbed by the towel and then I'd alternate towels and that was wonderful because it, it sucks out that heat that's causing a lot of the nausea and the, the, the dizziness. The other thing that I was told to do is to eat so the moment I got home from the hospital I ate a big meal because apparently food really helps you recover from the effects of radiation and the last thing I did was go to bed and have a sleep so the combination of somebody driving me the cold compress is eating and sleeping, I was fine. Within four hours of every treatment, I was able to sort of get on with my day and actually do some work. But I, I never totally recovered emotionally from the cancer and I, I was still depressed and it affected the way I felt about myself as a woman because breast cancer attacks your breast and the breasts are a symbol of womanhood. So I felt like half a woman and when I was doing a, my uh, TV series a couple of years ago, my makeup artist, who became a very good friend, said to me, you know, he dresses me up and makes me look all beautiful for the camera, but after the camera stopped rolling, I wore frumpy clothes and sort of became the unseen woman. I didn't want people to notice me, which wasn't the way I was before the breast cancer. So he made me realize the effect that it had on me in my sense of myself as a woman. I'd become a non-woman. And that, that I, I knew it was because I felt as though I would be doing false advertising as a woman if I be, behaved like a woman or perceived myself as a woman. And when Stephen pointed this out to me, that was sort of the beginning of really the emotional rehabilitation from the breast cancer. When I said, okay, this is stupid. You know, aging and everything is affecting your womanhood. It's got nothing to do with breast cancer. The scar was minimal. And he made me sort of snap out of that negative woman image and brought me back to feeling totally rehabilitated. So what I, my suggestion to anybody who's going through cancer is you will go through many stages of it. You have to re first overcome the disease and that's what your doctor's there for. Rehabilitate your body with exercise and rehabilitate your soul and your, your emotions with friends and anything else, any therapy or any, any other way that can help you become totally whole again and feel that you have actually totally cured yourself of breast cancer. Mm -hmm.